Netflix has taken your money, but has it given you anything? Oh, it will. Trust me, and a doctor won't cure it. John Carter of Mars or Dwarf Tossing? You decide. Can Klingons have dyslexia? <laughs> I really want to know. Dude, you got a Burton board and a rocket? They're skiing on Mars. No, Saturn. The e-reader wars are heating up with the Kindle fire. Can it take on the giant of the iPad? Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Warning, effects of time shifting may occur. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm Peter Mayhew. This is Trisha Halper, number six from Battlestar Galactica. Hi, this is Colin Ferguson with Sci-Fi Channel Eureka, and you're listening to Slice of Sci-Fi. SliceofSciFi.com And of course, with all those answers to those questions, uh, we are starting the show. This is, I'm Michael Armenengay. I'm Brian Brown. I'm Tim Adamick. I'm Brett Filipek. And I am Pado on Noah. There you wow. go. That's us for this week, folks. And we got lots of great stuff. So we probably should just, you know, get down to it. I'm Dive thinking. in. Yeah. Why not? Positions, everyone. And now, the news. Oh, Klingon dyslexia cure could learning? Thank you, Yoda. Thank you, Yoda. I, I, I understood that. Yeah, I know you did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so 50-year-old husband and father, Jonathan Brown, spent 12 years studying Klingon. Okay. Yeah, obviously got a lot of spare time on his hands disturbing. as well. Yeah. Not only has he mastered the language created for the Star Trek universe, but he also says it's helped cure his dyslexia. Wow. I have to start learning. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Brown is the head linguist on learning Klingon series of CDs released by the Klingon Language Institute. Yes. And in the process of writing the scripts and recording the lessons, he taught himself a new way for dealing with his own dyslexia. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's kind of what you've done, though, uh, right, Mike? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you, you figure out ways to cope and work around it. Absolutely. So this is what he says. He says, working on the translation has helped me understand where I've been having problems all my life with languages. I realize I've been trying to remember the words in the name part of my brain because I can't remember names. I can't remember words. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Exactly. There exactly. you go. Right. Yep. And he told this to the BBC, and he said, with the Klingon language ga uh, games used on the CD, I tend to put words in different places, and it went into my long-term memory in a different way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I guess I can dig that. That makes sense. I, I, I get that. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, you, you as a dyslexic. Believe me, I, yeah. I, I, I get it. I, I really do, because it, it, it's challenging some days, because there's good days and bad days. Okay. You know, like, like today is actually a bad day for me. Um, really? Yeah, I'm actually having a bad day right now. Okay. So. <laughs> well, the good thing is I'm reading, so you're good. Uh, that's right. That's right. That's why I sit here and push buttons. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I just need to know what does Dothraki cure? Yeah, well, you know, mm. nothing. Dothraki yes. doesn't, Doth cure doesn't cure anything. Cure anything. Uh, no, it cures erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that it does. Hey, speaking of, oh, of you know, awesome. Game of Thrones, yes? we're going to talk about some casting news from a lot of different shows, but we're going to talk about Game of Thrones. It has cast Downtown Abbey actress Rose Leslie as Egrette. Now, as a repeat after me, folks, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Yes, you know that, nothing. Yes, that you know is, nothing. That is her lying that she always says in it. Basically, she's the wilding woman and spear wife who becomes a love interest for Jon Snow. Wait, didn't he take a, an oath to become a brother and no woman? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It'll be explained, folks. Yeah, yeah. Mean. They'll talk about Molestown and the whole nine yards. Oh, yes. Digging for buried treasure. Digging for treasure, yes. Mm. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Now, Chuck has also had uh, has a new uh, cast member as well. Uh, former Charlie's Angels is going to be Sarah's mom. Who? And that's Cheryl Ladd. Really? Ooh. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? And uh, it's gonna be she's gonna show up in the eighth episode of the uh, the season, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's supposed to air in January, I think is what they're saying. Uh, yeah, something like that. Sounds so. about right. So finally, Emma Caulfield from, of course, Buffy and and Angel and whatnot has making a guest appearance on ABC's Once Upon a Time. Now she will play the blind witch from Hansel and Gretel. Okay. I didn't realize the witch was blind. Neither did I. Yeah, supposedly that's one of the tellings of it. I, I so. was going to say, that's that's one of the original Grimm's, right. I do believe. And right. the interesting thing, I thought she was dyslexic. 
<laughs> that's spelled Klingon. No, she spelled right. Klingon, so she's good now at that point in time. God, it's um, a blind but, witch that speaks Klingon. That speaks Klingon. Uh, chases kids. And just, and just, right. Wow. And is a demon from Buffy. And lives yeah. in a house made out of cookies. Why? Well, of course you would. My, yeah. my you? head hurts. <laughs> Thank you. So Once Upon a Time debuts on Sunday, October 23rd on of ABC, by does. the way, folks. Uh-huh. And uh, the last little bit here before we take a break is NASA's high-resolution images from Cassini phenomenal by the way yes, yes they are mm-hmm. and it's taking pictures of Saturn's moon and Cladius and it reveals that there's snow at the poles of course yes. there is now researchers think superfine snowflakes have blasted out geyser like jets which emanate from long fissures called tiger stripes on the moon's southern hemisphere now some of the snow from these plumes falls back on the moon's surface coating older fractures and craters in a slow process of accumulation basically reports indicate the snowdrifts may be as much as 330 feet. I'm so deep. bored. In, wow. I'm so wow. bored in there. Just to let you know. You're there? So yeah. The particles are only a fraction of a millimeter in size, so even finer than talcum powder. And this is from Paul Sheck, who's, who's oh. the, the leader of the planetary scientist. Talk about lunar. burning some powder up yeah. down yeah. the mountain. Wow. He's a planetary <laughs> scientist at the Lunar and Planetary Institute in Houston. And he said, this would make for the finest powder a skier could ever hope for. Hello, NASA. Can I get on the next shuttle? Oh, yeah. darn it, you decommissioned them. Never mind. The yeah. difficulty of it is it's actually... Actually, um, I do believe uh, methane. Or it's, uh, it's, yeah. it, it, it's like it's like four thousand <laughs> yeah. degrees below zero. Yeah, no, I, that's what I, I was I, wondering. I, was it actually snow, like frozen water ice? Or are we talking me- like carbon it's, dioxide? I think it's exactly. carbon dioxide or it's, methane. It's, it's yeah, it's nothing. It's, nothing uh, you probably actually want to uh, ski yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. And you probably would be like uh, two ten seconds. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. that and, would and be and a wicked would the gravity burn. be like. Yeah, with gravity too. Yeah, would you really be able to ski? Probably not. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a break and okay. we'll come back for some more news after There's this. There's somebody out there that's going to try. Dude, I'm so there. <laughs> Dragon Moon Press, bringing you some of the most exciting new authors in sci-fi and fantasy. Their titles open new worlds and bring unforgettable characters to readers just like you. Bring the magic and wonder of dragons to your child with Dragon's Fire Wizard's Flame by Michael R. Menengay. Write your own story with a complete guide to writing fantasy. Books by Dragon Moon Press. Sci-fi, fantasy, and beyond. Order these titles from your local retailer or visit the website at dragonmoonpress.com. Reactor leak detected. Oh, yes. It is getting close to Christmas time. Go get that book. Yeah, there you go. I know that book. Who's that? Yeah, who's uh, that guy? That, that, Never that, heard of him. It's some writer hack. He's a hack. Yeah. yeah. Wrote a yeah. book once. Well, you know. speaking of which, you know, the new Amazon Kindle Fire is coming out. Or at least they announced it. And the ever-growing battle for e-reader supremacy yes. has, tom, tom, tom. has heated up with the fire. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, oh the, you shouldn't yeah, have. So, really, you shouldn't have. Uh, so, of course, now the battle over digital content has spilled over to, into the brick and mortar stores. Oh, now, yes, too. it did. So, Amazon signed a deal with DC to distribute digital versions of some of their most popular graphic novels on the fire. That includes The Watchmen, Fables, The Dark Knight Returns. Now, Barnes and Noble wanted to get on the select action and requested a similar deal with DC, which the DC declined. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So this has led Barnes & Nobles to pulling all the graphic novels that have an exclusive deal with Amazon from their physical stores. Yep. Wow. Oh. Yeah, welcome to the fun. Yeah. Does anybody yes. hear that guy like who does the, the, the fights, start of the fights, let's get ready, ready to rumble. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm ready the problem is, is that it's just going to shoot them in their foot because when it comes right down to it, the Customers, the customer decides, and you're making me suffer. Yeah, exactly, the because customers I don't care reader. what the, de- the right. deal is. All they want is their content. Right. If they can't get it there, they're going to go online. More being likely. Absolutely. And where are they going to go when they go online? Amazon, probably. And you know what? I got to say, I haven't been in a bookstore in probably seven years. They still, ha- they still have those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really? why they're closing down. Walden, yeah. Walden's the next one that bit oh, the yeah. dust. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're 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 going by the way of the dodo. So yeah, pretty much. Now here's the interesting thing. So mm-hmm. Barnes and Noble did not pull them from their online store no just the brick and mortar just the brick and mortar interesting yeah Mm -hmm. so okay whatever we'll see see. oh john carter from mars yes so director andrew stanton says he sees the upcoming release of john carter as the start of a trilogy of films based on the edgar rice burroughs novels now disney agrees that it could be much that case provided the film course makes enough money to warrant sequels mm. well, yeah of course of course 
Now, you may be asking, guys, how much money are they going to have to exactly make? How much money are they going to exactly have to, make? have to make? Now, according to New York Magazine, the movie has to be making seven hundred million to warrant a sequel. Wow. American dollars? That's an ass ton of cash. <laughs> is that, I mean, is that world, glo- is that global? No. Because I if would, it's global, we, they got a shot. Because, I would think so. Yeah. But if they got a, if it's global, yes, that's. Yes, it is worldwide. Okay. Worldwide. And so, then, then, yeah. So yes, they that's pretty that's that's easy more easily than just US domestic if it's gross. US yeah. domestic gross, yeah, wow. So yeah. Have to be well, one pretty much one one ticket in uh in like Zimbabwe is what, like four point three trillion dollars. Right? Well, yeah, but it's <laughs> Zimbabwe in dollars. It's just yeah. doesn't quite or translate. A goat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Whatever. And the exchange rate yeah. is really tough. Uh, you know, the reason this is because the price tag associated with the project as well as the additional oh yeah 17 days of reshooting they had to do wow. Right. Wow. yeah wow. 17 days of reshooting okay that, that does not like something that does not give me well. a lot of confidence no. in this film right there but okay <sighs> yeah <laughs> Uh, so you know, Netflix took some more money from you, folks. Some people, not sixty not percent, guy, not me, so. not me. But here's the th- here's kind of the payoff. Fans of the Fox Emmy winning series Arrested Development finally get news that they've been waiting years to basically for yes. Arrested Development movie is finally going to happen, supposedly. Now, before the Blue Family hits theaters, though, they're going to be uh, back to the television roots, and for a ten episode fourth season to be s- to set up the movie. That yeah. everybody's really? fighting yes. over. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Now it's it's that ten episode season of the show that caught huh. everybody's attention. Not only because you know it's a brilliant comedy, but also Hollywood is, as Tim said, fighting out to get it. Yeah. There's a huge bidding war on it, basically to to get it and distribute it. Now, of course, the front runner is Showtime, but before right. that, you know, that was before Netflix and Hulu <laughs> have thrown their name on the dance card. Right. Mm. So, yeah, and I, I'm, sh- I'm yeah. sure Hulu's mm. going to get this, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Now, Netflix did get a new season of this, and it you know, was one of the many more high-profile content that they've just released for streaming. And, of course, you know that's a bit more positive news that basically uh, it's not been having a very good quarter, folks, because of the price mm. increase. Yeah. Imagine that. But hasn't, hasn't that show been off the air for like... Absolutely. Been, yes, but there's a, a very devoted following. I know, for but Absolutely. I'm like, that's amazing. Yes. That, yeah. that it, well, there's always that. I mean, that, well, that's that's fandom. But, I don't care what it is. But think about what that means. How many shows have we all fought for that we sat there and said, oh, they canceled it. It'll never come back well, again. Well, it was much like, I mean, Arrested Development and, yeah. was much like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a, honestly, as a fan of stuff, that's a mm-hmm. great story for me that maybe if I sit there and I'm that devoted to my show and I'm yeah. that vocal, maybe my show can come back yeah. somehow. Well, 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 it, you and go. you know what? There, there'll, there'll be a movie too, but... It'll probably have to make about seven hundred million. Yeah, exactly. or more. Yeah. 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 in Zimbabwean dollars. So here's the other thing too. Here's some of the new things that that Netflix has in its streaming queue. That's that's big, big. Walking Dead. Yes. Mm-hmm. Both versions of Being Human. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now Netflix also did Deep Space Nine to the catalog as well, and the animated version of Star Trek. Damn. I know. I tell you, Brett, you, you, you got to get it, buddy. I'm, I'm yeah. loving my. I'm loving it. Yeah. I. I so so. Well, Netflix has stepped on a few toes, of course, while splitting the cost of the discs into streaming. It appears that the content provider is actually trying to step up and offer greater value for the streaming folks. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll see. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and they really are. I mean, they're they've stepped up and and they their recommendations actually make sense now. Somebody went in and reworked that in that the algorithm. That, it it's much much better. Yeah, it's true. Um it, it it really does understand what you watch, what you like and the suggestions and the things that they are they're they're showing that you would be interested in. I haven't taken anything off of that list yet that I have not found fascinating. Wow. So, mm-hmm. that's, that's very that's, very good. Yeah, so you know the Barnes and Noble decision that we talked about just a little bit earlier could affect you not being able to find the new adapt- adaptation of the best-selling Millennium trilogy, which of course involves Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm. Now, Stig Larson basically started with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and the graphic it's going to be a graphic novel, and it's going to be released under the Vertigo line of DC. Vertigo Banner is one of the ones we love because it's much more mature mm-hmm. and a lot of times dark. Now, DC will work the late author's estate in the adaptations because, yes, yeah, Stig, he's dead, folks. In case, in case you didn't really know. Yeah. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo graphic novel will come out in 2012, followed by The Girl Who Played with Fire in 2013, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, yes, in 2014. All three, of course, will be available in print and digital 
format. That's oh, nice. excellent. That's cool. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Actually, it's a really great series. Is it? Uh, yeah, I've actually, read it. It's Me really, either. it's a good book, and it's not a bad movie, believe it or not. Okay. So at least the Swedish version. I should say. Oh, okay, so I've the got girl to that to kicks Bork, the horn, Bork. hornet's nest was actually <laughs> pretty decent too. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And Brett, that was funny. <laughs> Brett, this is for you, buddy. Uh-huh. So a couple of weeks ago, we told you about the Imperial Star Destroyer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of Legos. oh, yeah, yeah. Not to be outdone, fans of BSG have created a ship seen only a few seconds in the original series entirely out of Lego blocks. The battleship Berserk. That's what the really? Z, yes. Uh-huh. Measures at 73 inches long by 24 inches wide by 14 inches high and weighs about 54 pounds. Wow. Nice. So the weight comes from the Legos as I well as it. as well I as the wooden it. steel, which keep the thing from collapsing on itself. Basically, at that point. And okay, course, you know, I I really do think they lose okay. points for having to add structural elements other than other than Lego. Well, that's what the guy did with the Star Destroyer sure. basically did. Is he yeah. went back and Was said, it really? he went back and put made it completely out of Legos. Mm-hmm. So that's the second one that came out. Uh, the the, the Lego purists if, out there. That's, absolutely. If absolutely. Legos, yeah. if any executive from Lego is listening to me and the sound of my voice, <laughs> see my face. <laughs> no, they're I not going to give you anything. I will buy this. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Uh, is is it time for something else? Now? Well, it, it is actually. Okay. We're um, we're going to uh, let the trivia slide this week. Okay. We are. Um, because we have to finish up right. our um, review of the uh, Chicago. That's movie. totally right. All right. These are the day three highlights of the Star Trek convention in Chicago. Of course, the biggest event of the day was the final appearance at a convention for Leonard Nimoy. All day long, there was so much anticipation for this event that you could almost feel it in the air. But to start the day, they had two of the actors from Deep Space Nine. The two people from Deep Space Nine was Odo and Kira. I would give you their real names, but I have trouble pronouncing Renee's last name. So I'm not even going to try. I really kind of felt sorry for them because even though the show was wonderful, it was very hard to follow the comedy team from the night before and the historic event coming later on. Still, being a Deep Space Nine fan, I really enjoyed the show. But the major event of the day was Leonard Nimoy. Before they brought Leonard Nimoy out on the stage, they had a surprise video for him. I assume this was done by J.J. Abrams because it had the entire cast of the 2009 movie doing little interviews and little bits thanking Leonard for everything he has done, and they were all wishing Leonard Nimoy a fond farewell, congratulating him on his uh, lifetime achievement, and wishing him well on his third retirement, talking about how wonderful his career was, how important he was to Star Trek, and each of them was giving an example. Leonard Nimoy is to Star Trek as, and then they each had their own, and the best one came from J.J. Abrams. He said Leonard Nimoy is to Star Trek as William Shatner is to Priceline. After that, they played the Bruno Mars Lazy Song video that Leonard Nimoy stars in. And if you haven't seen that, look it up on YouTube. It's definitely worth seeing. So then came the event. Now, for those of you who have seen his show this year, you know he doesn't take question and answers anymore. He kind of gives a presentation on his life. And it was very touching seeing the history, seeing his likes and dislikes, seeing things about his past talking about his photography. At the end, you could tell he was starting to kind of get choked up. He said he's made promises to a few people. He might pop up in a few shows here and there, but this was indeed his last convention. Even he felt the moment. We could all sense the finality of what he was doing and what he was saying. He even said, this is hard, and I expected it to be. At the end, he thanked the fans for making his career, and he hoped that all of us would live long and prosper. Before the show, they had passed out signs to every person there. At the end of it, we all held them up, and the sign said, We love you, Leonard. Live long and prosper. He received a standing ovation, of course, and then left the stage for the final time. As a lifelong Star Trek fan, I felt very privileged to experience this one moment of Star Trek history. Space. The final frontier. Hey, you. Yeah, you, in the geeky t-shirt with the kids? Yeah, come over here. I've got a great podcast you should be listening to. It's called How to Grow Your Geek, and it's all about TV shows and movies and games and great things you can do with your kids that you can enjoy together and maybe, just maybe, get your kids to be geeks like you. So come over and visit howtogrowyourgeek.net and see what you might have been missing.
Self-destruct system activated. Hey, Slicers. This is Noah. I've been listening to the podcast for, oh, almost since you started doing the podcast. And one joke or one complaint that you folks seem to make over and over and over again, when no matter what genre you're talking about, be it movies or TV or books, is when somebody goes back into the same pool again and you say, of course they are, they need the money. This director's <laughs> making a sequel. Of course they are, they need more money. Mm. Or DC's doing a reboot. Of course they are, it's all about the money. Money, 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 yeah. money. Yeah. You make that comment so often. I wonder what you really mean. I wonder if you folks don't go to work every day and do your jobs for money. Because honestly, that's what these people do for a living. Oh, totally. And I'm not sure, saying they sure, always sure. do a great job. And I'm not saying they're not motivated by money. But I'm wondering, do you really think they shouldn't be motivated by money? You know, I pulled this I pulled this question off. I I'm I pulled this question out specifically because I, I it, it it stuck with me. I, I've I heard it a couple days ago and it just I kept going over my head. You know, you're right. There, It is all about money when it comes down to the bottom line. Mm-hmm. But right. the difference is, is that my job, I'm not putting it out there for millions of people to enjoy what I do. Your so jo- so your my job. product does not affect a- a- the masses the way that oh, ball. these do. No. Ball. It, really? Hold on, though. Okay. His, job, his job is not to be creative. You know, that's right. what I'm saying. You know, that, that really would right. come down. Okay. In, not, in, not this, what I'm doing here. I'm talking about day my job. day job. Day not, job. Not, not this. We that's don't get paid for jobs. <laughs> That's what they get paid for. So sure, they're supposed yeah. to go every day and, and, and do their thing. But there are things to be creative and come up with new stuff. Not okay. sit there and mm-hmm. pull something out of, out of the recycle bin. Okay. Who's next? Uh, okay. Well, go uh, ahead. Okay. So the thing that I would say is actually, even in the case of, say, Mike's job, uh, there's still the idea that you're putting forward the best thing that you can exactly right. and when it comes to create you know a creative product you're trying to actually put something forward that's vibrant and lively and creative and so there there could be an argument to be made that if you're just churning something out for a mm-hmm. bug that actually doesn't deliver the best product hmm okay tim well you know this actually kind of dovetails into the lucas discussion we had uh, last week right which uh, lucas is definitely not about the money lucas is about some sick obsession in that guy's brain mm. and he feels the need to fix his past mistakes mm-hmm. when you go and you look at somebody like uh johnny depp you know who just recently said yeah disney pays me way too much money to go they, out to and say do no. this to, to do this no they pay me just he said they pay me this ridiculously stupid amount of money to go out and do these movies yeah and I don't understand why, and they're paying me too much. Mm-hmm. You know, he's making an entertaining movie. If he turns around and makes an absolutely crap movie that he knows he's making a crap movie, uh, you know, then it's just a job. Yeah. Now, to your point of affecting lives, at the end of the day, who will die in filth if Johnny Depp doesn't make a new movie? For me, who won't be able to buy their groceries because, you know, somebody mm-hmm. can't transfer for payments? Sure. Which one on the overall scale of things is more... Uh, you know, rewarding. Which which touches people more more. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I, but again, I, I'll, I'll you, concede that to some extent. Right. I, I I get that. On the level of importance, you know, a lot of these guys making movies. Who the hell cares? Brown. Uh, Tim, you ignorant slut. <laughs> yeah. uh, we got the Saturday Night Live bit uh, in. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, no, I mean, really, I mean, I, I do I agree on the whole. Never mind. <laughs> Never, Never mind. mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, come on. Honestly, it's movies. It's entertainment. Yeah. It's not life and death. You know, yes, do we blow it out of proportion? Yes. But you know that's why? what we do. It's what we do. We're entertaining, and that's what we kind of do. I mean, uh, we know who would care if we all would you guys listen to us if we were like yep you're right because yep, if, it, if, it came, if it came yeah. down or, to that if, if it was all about the money here we would be basically oh, devolved down into dicks and fart jokes i mean true that, pretty much that, that, i mean that's there what my sells. second act yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what sells yeah. you yeah. know we we'd get the audience we yeah. get the numbers we get right. the people and we basically go down to the baser you know but things that that make motivate people. True, but if you if we sat there and every week just did the exact same stories week after week, how many people would sit there and listen to us? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Shame. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. and really, at the end of the day, 
when we sit here and say, yeah, you needed a paycheck. Why do we do it? Because it gets a friggin' laugh. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. It's not Pretty that we're much. saying, oh, he's, you know, this guy's just, you know. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. being humorous. Yes. It's called entertainment. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, okay, yeah, maybe the horse is the, the we flogged the horse to a greasy little spot oh, yeah. on the ground. Yeah, okay. But I mean, it rings true with a lot of people when we say mm-hmm. these things. I mean, because mm-hmm. honestly, yes, Hollywood is out for a buck, and and well, would everybody they, is. Well, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and would yeah. Hollywood rape our childhood for a buck? Most, Absolutely. Most Absolutely. Lucas they have done many, repeatedly. Many oh. times, exactly, on yeah. many occasions. Yeah. But you know what? It, it all comes down to what do you people think? You know, give yeah. us a call. Yeah, you know, know the number is 206 339 Trek. That's 206 339 8735. Call in, let us know. We will talk about that on that sh- other show, that yeah, listener feedback. feedback show where you are the star. There you go. All right. Well, I think that's it for this week, right? Yeah, absolutely. We'll have All some right. more of fun and craziness. Couple uh, of days. Yeah, absolutely. Nigel's back with more multiverse news. Ah, Woo-hoo! Yes.